Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel many times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, many different styles, and they were actually one of the first craft breweries I encountered when I moved here to Sweden back in 2015. In the early days, they were known mainly for their kind of juicy, fruity, sour beers, but also for their big imperial stouts, but they have diversified quite a bit in more recent times but definitely a very strong all-round Swedish brewery in my opinion and one that you need to check out if you get the chance. Now the beer that we're having a look at today is a style that I know these guys can do very solidly it's also one of their latest releases through Systembolag here in Sweden as well so very much looking forward to trying this one as I always am when it comes to this brewery so hopefully it's another good beer hopefully it makes for an interesting review and as always, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head up to the Gothenburg area once again. Jutebori, as you would say in Swedish, the, craft beer, the Swedish craft beer capital up there on the west coast. Got to get that Gothenburg catchphrase in when we're reviewing Gothenburg beers. We're going to go a little bit to the kind of east of the city, to Landvetter. And that means that we're going to have a look at another beer from the wonderful Dugis Bruggeri. So this particular beer is called Nebula. It comes in at 6.5% ABV, and this is another New England hazy, whatever you want to call it, IPA. So this beer was released as part of the Local Osmoska League assortment through Sistembolag here in Sweden for October of 2022. And uh, yeah, this is one of two beers I think they released in that uh, assortment this month. We do have the other one in the fridge, of course, as well, and you'll see that in a few videos' time. But always nice to review the new beers from Dugas, and we will have something dark from them a little bit later in the month as well. But as always, looking forward to this, as I said, let's crack on and see what we have here. So, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a wee bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews, that I've done from Dugas Brewery before and you will definitely see more in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the, it's always great your support is always greatly appreciated you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer based on geography the whole channel has a geography based tagging system and you can of course check out the playlist of beers from different countries you'll find this one in the Swedish playlist along with many other things but let's go on to my brewery notes then and tell you a little bit about the history of Dugas Bruggeri. So as I mentioned to you already, Dugas Bruggeri are based in Landvetter on the outskirts of Sweden, very close to uh, Gothenburg Landvetter Airport of course, and the brewery was established back in 2005 in Mulndal to the south of Gothenburg by Mikael Engström Duga, whom of course it takes its name from Duga Dugas. So a few years prior to this, Mikael had actually met an Englishman who was selling second-hand breweries and this got him thinking about setting up his own brewery and brewing his own beer. So he studied the very complex Swedish alcohol laws, he visited other breweries around the country and then he started buying up his own equipment to put together his own brewery and all of this culminated with the opening of the first Dugas facility in Mulndal back in 2005. Over the first few years he continued to experiment a little bit and just build up his infrastructure and things like that and like I kind of mentioned earlier this brewery was known for their imperial stouts and porters back in the day as well as some of their kind of fruity juicy sour beers if you like. Uh, but by 2009 the brewery had outgrown their original premises in Mulndal and so they made the decision to move and they moved to Landvetter the following year in 2010. So at maximum the older brewery had a capacity of 1500 hectolitres of beer per year so that's 150,000 litres but the new brewery started with a capacity of 8000 hectolitres of beer per year so about 800,000 litres but this has been more than doubled in recent years and uh, they became they've become known for a variety of different things to be honest they've had so many different series of beer over the last wee while it's been a bit difficult to keep track of um, but like I said initially they were known for their kind of big imperial stouts one of the classic beers that they did was Idiot uh, and of course they have the big Egypt these days but I would love if they did a rebrew of the original Egypt that would be pretty awesome and uh, another one of the kind of iconic beers for me would be the Tropic Thunder which was a collaboration with Stillwater Artisanal and that was one of the kind of sour beers that really set off the Swedish craft, uh, the Swedish sour uh, beer scene, if we can call it that. So um, yeah, Dugas, for me, those are the two beers that remind me of Dugas. The Egypt, 
or the, the or the big Egypt, I guess it would be, and the uh, the Tropic Thunder. Those two really are must tries. In more recent times, though, they've been experimenting a little bit with um, with different IPAs. I mean, they had the Fresh and the Crush series, which were New England IPAs. Also, the Bite series, which was their West Coast. Uh, they do have their future. Probably their biggest series, though, is the Future series, which is the Barrel Age series. And they have the uh, Mega series as well, which are the big, you know, 15% plus Imperial Stouts. Those things are monsters. And you will see one of those again at some point soon. But um, yeah, I think that summarises uh, Dugas' beer quite well, actually. And doing a lot of IPAs and things these days, but of course, very solid when it comes to Imperial Stouts and their, uh, their sour beers as well. I think they're still doing the fruit series uh, of sour beers, if I remember correctly. But from what I understand, pretty much everything is canned these days, apart from some of the, the big uh, mega series bottles and maybe some of the future series as well. These days, they're also producing uh, some spirits. They have a gin, which is quite interesting, apparently. So that's something I do need to look into, even though I'm not such a big gin drinker and never really drink that stuff, actually. But yeah, the other thing to point out about Dugas Brewery would be that they are one of the co-owners of the two Brewers Beer Bars in Gothenburg. There's one on Trade Longgarten, and I forget the, the name of the street that the other one's on, but the Trade Longgarten one is the original. Uh, they, of course, co-own that along with the guys from All In Brewing, who are one of the numerous gypsy breweries operating in the Gothenburg area, and I believe Electric Nurse also own a share in that as well. And Electric Nurse is run by Mikael's daughter, Ida, along with her husband, John. And they brew some very good beers as well. But uh, yeah, as far as I can think, that is everything we need to tell you about Dugas Brugger for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the untapped page to learn more about the different beers that they've done. Or you can have a look at some of my older reviews, which go back to about 2015 or so. So, um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a look at this beer itself. So, as you can see, the artwork on this one is pretty nice. One thing I do like about Dugas as well is that they do their cans, you know, their half-litre cans. The 330 bottles that they did, you know, these are good for the, the kind of big Imperial Stout beers. Um, but, you know, a four, I think a 440 or a half-litre is kind of essential when it comes to an IPA. But now that they're doing half-litres, I would like to see them have a go at some more uh, laggers and things like that. Um, you know, doing some traditional German lagers and Vienna lagers and stuff would be interesting. I think they have done that in the past. And that is one of the things as well I would point out is that the untapped profile, I believe, is not accurate when it comes to the number of beers that Dugas have actually produced. Because, um, yeah, it's, it says, I forget how many it says, but the last time I looked at it, it said only like 60 or something. Dugas have done way, way more than that. I'll need to ask Mikael how many beers they've actually done, to be honest with you. But yeah, like I said, 500 milliliter can this one. Uh, 6.5% New England Hazy, whatever you want to call it, IPA. Uh, and I believe this beer cost me 50 Swedish kroner. So that's about five euros, four dollars, uh, four pounds 50 sterling, sorry, and then five dollars 50 American, just for those of you watching in different parts of the world. But there you can see the Dugas D as their symbol. And then you've also got the uh, this one here. This is kind of new, actually. I've not really seen this one. Dust in outer space. So yeah, and then you've also got another one of the Dugas uh, Brewery symbols on the back there. But yeah, it certainly looks pretty nice, this one. Uh, it says here, a nebula is a distinct body of interstellar clouds. It's also a stone, uh, a stone fruity, piney, zesty, uh, lightly floral, tropical, and earthy, woodsy, resinous, grape-like, sweet, citrusy, and spacey IPA. Cosmic. So um, yeah, you know, of course, a nebula is basically a very, a very young star, of course. What happens in space get my astrophysics knowledge out now of course from my studies but uh, yeah basically a nebula <coughs> is when you're having the you've you've basically just kicked off your nuclear fusion reaction in a in uh, a cloud base in in space basically of course all the gas and particles and stuff in the cloud they basically form a gravity center you get lots of friction bang nuclear fusion there you've got a star it throws out other stuff and that gives you planets and so on very brief summary there but as i say this nebula is a 6.5 percent new england hazy ipa let's get it out and we'll get on with actually tasting this beer then i always get quite excited when i try the uh the dugas beers of course but let's get cracking with this one then oh this one's very pale actually it's kind of interesting. One of the paler ones I've seen from Dugas, if memory serves me correctly. So, um, yeah, anyway, we've maybe got about, what, 
two thirds of the beer in the glass at the moment, something like that, maybe a bit more. But yeah, anyway, before the head disappears, you can see that this beer is poured with about a one third finger of a frothy, I would say perfect white head. That is faded away to be a kind of thinner foamy layer. In terms of the color of this one, I would say this is actually a very kind of pale yellow, but I'll just let you have a wee look at the head before it disappears there. You can see nice kind of small bubbles there, but some medium ones on the top, a little bit bumpy, but that has that has kind of, oh, this is not good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this one has faded, the head of course has faded away to be a very kind of thin foamy layer there, just a nice little bit of ring uh, around the edge of the glass there too, but uh, yeah, very thin foamy layer on top of the, the beer now. But like I said, nice kind of quite pale yellow colour this one. In terms of the um in terms of the colour, you know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of a mix of a pineapple and um yeah, it does remind me a little bit of a kind of pineapple and mango sort of juice, this one. Something like that. Very, very light tropical fruit juice. I always like comparing the colour of New England IPAs to different fruit juices because, you know, that is just what they remind me of. But yeah, remember, the colour of your beer depends on, one, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker colour of beer. Any barrel agent you do or any adjuncts you put in will affect the colour of that beer as well. But, um, yeah, that uh, do, those two variables are things you don't often have to care about when it comes to New England IPAs. But in terms of the um, hazy level on this one, I have to say for a 6.5% of the level of haziness and opacity you have in this beer is pretty... Um, is pretty impressive. You know, the haze depends, of course, on the oak content, wheat content, and to a degree the yeast. It varies from beer to beer and brewery to brewery. But yeah, I've not seen many 6.5 percenters that are quite as opaque as this one. But regardless, the appearance of this one is not surprising when you consider what style it is. I think we should move on and have a wee look at the aroma of this beer. Not too much visible carbonation in it either. But yeah, let's do the aroma of this one and see what we have. Oh yeah. Aroma wise, this is pretty nice actually. Um, this one feels it, it feels a little bit more pungent than I remember some of the other Dugas ones being. I think last month, if I remember correctly, we had a New England. What what was it called? It was at the Prime, and the uh, the, the Pinball, if I remember correctly, were the uh, were the names. So the Prime was a New England double, and the Pinball was a West Coast IP, an old school Seahawk West Coast IP. Very impressed with the, the pinball, incidentally, and the Prime was very solid as well. This one's definitely a more kind of... Uh, the Prime was quite a kind of creamy and smooth New England IP, whereas this one's a little bit more pungent. It's very kind of... Um, it's quite green and floral, but at the same time, it's also... It has got a good bit of tropical fruit there, but I find that this one's got a good little bit of a kind of lemony zest to it as well. So this is interesting. But malt base-wise, this is really nicely balanced um i love uh you know i love just seeing how you know with the new england ips these can lean six different ways in my opinion they can be sort of farmhousey and yeasty uh they can be a little bit more rye leaning and grainy as well those are more common in american brewed uh new england's right enough but then you've got the wheaty bitiness oaty creaminess barley malt bread and also the sweet side of things too so these six elements are visible uh in new england ipas and quite often you'll see that they these these different beers lean different ways. For me, this one's got a good little bit of oatiness to it, but I get quite a wee bit of wheat out of this beer. I think the kind of bitiness and zippiness you're getting in the malt base is coming from the wheat. But like I say, there's a lot of smooth oat in there. The barley malt, of course, is there too. But um, yeah, the way everything goes together in this beer, I think, is, um, is pretty damn nice, actually. It's quite interesting. So I think... Um, yeah, for me, this beer, this beer really goes about its business in, in quite an interesting way, for sure. But let's break this down. Uh, the backbone of the beer, absolutely. A little bit of fresh white bread bread crust in there. That's the backbone of the beer. There's a kind of Jacob's Cream Cracker type element in there as well. You can smell that on top of the bread crust. But a lot of, um, you know, there's a bit of soft, fluffy white bread in there. But you can also smell the, um, yeah, you can also smell the, um, Kind of dense you can smell the density of the wheat so um yeah the wheat at the back of the rose really has a good little bit of bitiness to it so yeah bread crust 
Yeah, absolutely. A little bit of bread crust, some Jacob's cream cracker, um, soft white bread in there, a little bit of wheaty bitiness, and um, yeah, I think that goes together very, very well for sure. Like the wheaty bitiness in this is nice, but on top of that, you are getting some of the oats, and the oats are actually very soft in this, and also they're kind of creamy, but sort of dry at the same time. As I've said in numerous New England reviews before, the oats give you an indicator of how fresh your New England IP is. The creamier they are, yeah, definitely the creamier they are, the more um, fresh the New England IP is. This one's kind of, it's still quite fresh, but you are getting a little bit of dryness and a little bit of sweetness out of the oat in this beer too. I don't get much in the way of a sweet element in the from the, the malt. Maybe just a tiny little bit of Werther's original kind of butter candy uh, sort of thing out of it but um, yeah the way that this beer goes together in the malt base is quite nice uh, when it comes to the green component of the beer for me there's a little teeny bit of earthiness to it but not a lot the green component really leans toward being a very bright and floral aromatic sort of thing there's also a good little bit of zestiness to the grassy character there again this shows you that it's mainly late addition and dry hopping that this beer is relying on remember three types of hopping early addition hopping gives you a lot of your bitterness that's within the first hour of the wort boil late addition hopping last half hour of the wort boil mainly flavor and aroma but also a little bit of bitterness and you've also got the um you also have uh, dry hopping which comes after the wort boil and that gives you only flavor and aroma uh, West Coast IPAs tend to use all three. New England's rely mainly on the latter two, and that's why your your green component in West Coast IPAs is more dank and deep. In New England IPAs, it tends to be brighter and more kind of zesty in a sense. So bear that in mind. But yeah, when it comes to uh, the fruity side of this beer, this one is quite interesting. Like I do get quite a little bit of a kind of lemony, zesty character out of it. Um, but there is quite a bit of tropical fruit in there as well. So you've got a lot of soft, you've got a bit of like a soft mango-y character for sure. Definitely some apricots and pineapples as well. I wonder if it's maybe Idaho 7 that's in here. There's something, just the softness of the tropical fruit is making me think Idaho 7. Always used to like playing Guess the Hops with uh, these beers though, but it's quite difficult now just because of the sheer extent of hops that there are out there. But yeah, so little touch of passion fruit as well, a little bit more pungent passion fruit, soft juicy mango, apricot, wee bit of pineapple. But for me... There's quite a little bit of a an almost lemony, zesty character in this beer. I'm getting a wee touch of gooseberry as well, so Nelson Sovin wouldn't surprise me, to be honest. But it smells a bit different from that gooseberry, like a gooseberry, white green grapey sort of thing in this beer for sure. But also a little bit of a lemony, limey character. So, um, yeah. The more that you smell of it, though, you get more of the tropical fruit. It sort of balances out a bit more, whereas initially it was very kind of lemony and zesty for sure. But as I always say, take a wee bit of time to enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But I do think it's about time that we uh, we try this one and see what it gives us. So um, yeah, this is the Nebula, a 6.5% New England hazy, whatever you want to call it, IPA from Dugas Brigley in Landvetter, just to the east of Gothenburg. Let's get stuck in. Slanger, Skull, cheers. Yeah, this is interesting for sure. Um, it's a nice beer, once again, which is what you expect from Dugas Brewery, but the hoppy side of the beer is what I was expecting. The malt base is a bit different. This is more oaty leaning. It takes a bit of time for the wheat to come out of it, so I like that. Hmm. I like beers that make you think a little bit more. But yeah, this is actually a very soft and juicy um, New England IPA, this one. It's very easy to drink. Absolutely. Um, and this actually reminds me of some of the first New England IPAs that I tried from, uh, from Dugas. And that was one of the things they always had, the very early ones when they first started, for me, I kind of felt in a way they, were, they just needed to be a little bit thicker. Uh, but they, you know, they had the flavour profile pretty much spot on, but they just needed to be that little bit thicker. And they did eventually, you know, they did become thicker going forward. This, but as I say, this one is a little bit lighter and a little bit more drinkable in its, uh, in its mouthfeel in a sense. So yeah, interesting for me.
And of course, your sense of mouthfeel, I think it changes all the time. I mean, back in the day, um, Hefeweizens are a style for me. Like when I try a Hefeweizen these days, I actually find it very, very light because of these New England IPAs. Whereas back in the day, um, I found them fairly heavy actually. To me, a Hefeweizen was a tasting beer, but yeah, you can, because of the New Englands, and um, they're actually find them fairly easy to drink now. Uh, but yeah, this is quite a, it's what for me compared to some of the other Dugas ones that I remember, this is a kind of lighter and, um, you know, kind of more drinkable New England IPA, like some of their very early efforts when they were doing the Fresh and the Crush series. Um, so that's interesting, this one. But I do have to remember as well, when I think about it, the, the prime that we had last month was, um, that was a double IPA, it wasn't a single. So it kind of makes sense that this one's a bit lighter and easier to drink, actually. So take that comment with a slight pinch of salt. But as I say, for me, this beer is it's another solid one from Dugas. We don't expect anything less from these guys, to be honest with you. But let's break it down and describe the flavour a wee bit more in depth. So middle third of your palate then. Backbone of the beer, absolutely a little bit of that fresh white bready bread crust. The a bit of the greeniness comes out later on. Uh, but on top of that, yeah, absolutely. On top of that, you have a more, um, you do have a little bit of that Jacob's Cream Cracker dryness. Then you've got the more dense white bread for sure. So yeah, you've got that more dense, yeah, definitely got a little bit of that more dense um, white bread. And then uh, you get a bit of the oaty character in this one. But this one, I, it's interesting because you get some of the oat flavour, but the oats aren't like too thick in this one. This is actually quite, um, I, I hesitate to say crisp, but the middle third of your palate in this beer is actually kind of light in a sense. As I say, bit of fresh white bread bread crust, wee bit of, um, yeah, bit of fresh white bread bread crust, wee bit of white bread, a little bit of, you know, uh, Jacob's cream cracker in there as well. Then on top of that, you can feel the slightly more dense wheat layer. But as I say, that's not too thick. It's actually quite a thin layer, but you get the kind of bitiness from the wheat. The wheat in this beer is actually quite bitey, bitey and almost kind of zippy in a sense. And then you get the oaty layer. But the oaty layer is very kind of smooth and I wouldn't call it creamy. For me, it is actually just kind of quite smooth in this one. And you can feel um, it kind of goes down the middle line of your tongue and it feels smooth and almost a little bit wet and sweet. And as you move further out toward the... Um, sides your palate it gives you a little bit of a kind of uh, it does give you a little bit of dryness in a sense so I like that I do like how that goes together so yeah nice little bit of creamy character to it <laughs> as I just said it's not so creamy <laughs> it doesn't make sense so yeah it, it maybe in the middle line of your tongue it's very very creamy but then it's it, it, as you move out from that, it's more of a wet oatiness that you get. And as you reach the edges of that middle third of your palate, it does give you a wee bit more of a kind of dryness in a sense. There's maybe a little element of a McVitie's digestive biscuit character mixed in there. But like I say, the middle third in your of your palate in this beer is surprisingly um, kind of light in a sense. So yeah, I quite like that. But let's look at the back third of the palate then with this beer. So the border region between middle third and back third of your palate, again you get a little bit of bready build up in there, so there's a little bit of that bready build up there, and then the base of the back third of the palate, you can feel the bread crusty character just gets a little bit drier actually, so it's a little bit drier and a little bit more um, kind of grainy if that makes sense. On top of that you get a more dense um, kind of white bready character from the barley malt of course, so that barley malt layer is taller but slightly more dense. And then you can feel the wheat just um, sitting on top of that, which is um, which is quite nice. So you've got a nice little bit of wheat just kind of sitting on top of all that. And it gives you a wee bit of bitiness. And then above all of that, you've got the more airy, very light bready esters kind of coming from the yeast in the beer, actually. These Dugas beers, though, um, when I try them, they really, I'm pretty sure these guys, they must have developed their own kind of house uh, New England yeast that they're using because um, 
you can just there, there's similar flavors in these beers like the yeasty character you get in these is just very very familiar and i like to think if i was to taste a a new england ipa blind like a dugas one I, th I like to think i could actually just say that's dugas um because these beers some of the yeasty esters they just have this distinctive very light bready and it's almost like a slightly sweet bready character as well it could all it you know in fairness it could be the malt based combination that they're using but i suspect just from some of the way the yeasty character in this beer is on the back of the palate pardon me i suspect i do suspect that it's um that, the, that it's something like that actually so it gets a thumbs up from me that way i like i like the how dugas have this kind of trademark and um, taste to the malt base but yeah let's focus on the the hoppy side of the beer the only other thing to say about the malty and yeasty side back third of the palate the flavor is a little bit taller as you come further forward it just kind of condenses down so um yeah i do like how that how that goes together um hoppy side of things then back corners of the palate absolutely little touch of earthiness to this one So yeah, a little bit of earthiness in there. As you move further forward, it's got a wee bit of herbal quality, but not a lot. But then, yeah, as you come toward the kind of front corners of the palette, um, it does have quite a, a bright floral aromatic note to it. And it's, it's got a little bit of that kind of almost dustiness from the dry hopping, actually. There's a little bit of that just, uh, just dusty character from this one. That, and maybe this beer is a, a lot fresher than I was thinking it was, actually. Um, but yeah, you do get a little bit of hop, you know, dusty green hoppy character out of this beer toward the kind of front corners of the palate. So yeah, that is kind of interesting with this one. So obviously very heavily dry hopped. Uh, around the front curve of your palate, uh, you get a little bit of a lighter grassy sort of note to it. And the grassiness does have a wee bit of zesty uh, character to it as well. But yeah, lots of floral aromaticity and a little bit of a lighter zesty um, grassy sort of thing to it. Um, yeah, but green component. It kind of suits the beer actually and it builds in with that kind of more um it actually kind of fits in quite well with the more wheaty zippy nature that this beer has but let's focus on the fruity side of things front third of the palate then so the border region between front third and middle third of your palate again you get a little touch of a bready build up there the base of the front third of your palate is a little bit more kind of smooth and white bread as you see but i think you get a bit more oatiness in the base there as well but yeah a little bit of white bread and on top of that you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters roll their way out of the beer um but yeah when it comes to the fruity side of this beer it's kind of interesting at the back of the front third of your palate you get a little bit of that grapefruity and passion fruity sort of thing which i wasn't expecting from the aroma but as you move further forward it shows you more of the kind of soft tropical fruits. So yeah, I think going by the flavour, I do think I was maybe wrong about Idaho 7 in this one. Because the fruits are a bit more pungent than that. Idaho 7 is always very soft, especially in a New England. I've not tried it on the West Coast and you know these hops do behave differently depending on the malt base and yeast and stuff like this. But yeah, there's a good little bit of grapefruit at the back of that front third of your palate. As you move further forward, it gives you a little bit more kind of mango in things, as I said. Um, yeah, grapefruit, passion fruit, juicy mango, a little bit of apricot and maybe papaya underneath this one. There's a really nice, in the middle of the palate, you get a good little bit of that softer tropical fruit. So apricots and papayas maybe, a little bit of pineapple sitting on top. And then as you move further forward into the front half of the front third of your palate, it does show you a wee bit more of that kind of zesty side actually. Um, so yeah, you do get more of a kind of juicy, you do get a little bit of a juicy pineapple in that front half of the front third of your palate, but then on top of that, there's a wee bit of a kind of lemony kind of character as well. Um, so yeah. It's interesting how that goes together but then the lemony the sort of lemony zesty note i would say that's kind of middle. it maybe evolves to be a little bit more of a kind of limey note and there maybe it's almost very slightly gooseberry-ish as well but i don't pretty sure there's not nelson sovin in this it would be more distinct if there was and even haller tau blanc from germany would give you a more distinct um kind of character than this but there is just a little element of that almost gooseberry-like character 
to this beer. But yeah, the, the kind of zesty character at the front tip of the tongue mixes in with the grassy esters quite well. But yeah, for me, everything goes together very nicely in this and yeah, it gets a big, big thumbs up actually. So um, yeah, I think I like I like this beer actually. It, it's gotten a bit, it, it's a more light, but sort of wheaty bitey and um, floral New England IPA this one. I think Dougas have done a nice job with this again to be honest with you. So um, yeah, I think we can leave it at that for the tasting side if you like. Let's round off with the mouthfeel though. As I said, for me, this beer, it's kind of mid-bodied, it's right in the middle of the spectrum, but still very drinkable. Carbonation does have a wee bit of a prickle to it, but it smoothens out the beer in a way. And as I say, overall, this is just, a, a for me, it's quite a, a drinkable New England, this one, for sure. It really does remind me of some of the very early New England IPAs that I tried from uh, from Dugas when they first started releasing these in bottles. So yeah, nice light drinkable quality too. In terms of IBUs, um, there is a little bit of you know dry hopping dustiness to this one. So that maybe gives the impression of a slightly more bitter character. Um, it feels as if it might be like 40-ish IBUs, but I get the feeling this is a standard sort of 30. You know, 30 IBUs is the kind of standard for a New England. The malt, as I said, is quite smooth, but you get a good little bit of hoppy, of um, wheaty, sorry, bitiness out of this one. This beer doesn't have such a big sweet component in that sense. And then we said the fruity character. It's mainly tropical, but you get a wee bit of zestiness in there as well. But yeah, the um, overall, it's a really nice, just drinkable New England IPA this one and uh, I wouldn't hesitate to drink this again but Dugas of course are always doing new things there's always new beers to try from them but yeah this one is pretty solid and it reminds me of the first uh, New England IPAs that I tried from this brewery actually so a wee bit of nostalgia in this review I think but I think we can round off at that with this one so yeah this was the Nebula 6.5% New England IPA from Dugas Brewery in Gothenburg uh, really nice more wheaty and bitey leaning one this and uh, pretty damn solid, as we would expect from this brewery. So, uh, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Dugas Brewery as well. And we will be returning to these guys at some point soon, I'm sure. But until the next time, check out my social media, check out theirs, try some of the Dugas beers, and I'll see you shortly. Slanju, Skull, and cheers.